All right. Five. Number 13, episode number 13, Lucky the counter 13. offer. Read the news. We find out what's going on, what is accurate, what is not accurate, which is a lot now. Perfect example. Got off the conversation with someone. She said the market's terrible. The market's not terrible. The last two weeks have been actually pretty excellent. So that's a perfect example of everything being a little delayed in the media. So Eric, if you'd like to start, you want me to start? I'll start. Perfect. Here's mine. Go ahead. The millionaire renters are on the rise. So in New York City, wealthy tenants make up 100 and it's actually up 170 percent in the Big Apple. So the amount of millionaires that are actually renting in New York City are up 170 percent, which kind of makes sense. They had money. They got bonuses. They got very cheap rents, say 2019, 2020, 2021. Obviously, it started going up exponentially, but then the sales market wasn't good, so they just kept on renting. Now the rates, so what they were talking about is that in New York City, out of any major city, the next closest is San Francisco. So there's 2,500 millionaires that are renting in New York City. In San Francisco, there's less than 300. That is second place. So it just shows how many millionaires are renting in New York City. Ironically enough, I do see a change going towards sales. I do see a lot of them who will either invest, because if you really think of the other two markets, it's either crypto, stock market, or housing. Those are really the three big markets that people are putting their money into. When I say that, what do you think of? I think one of the reasons is because a lot of people moved out and they're no longer having their primary. This is where my articles are today. Oh, okay. So I'm please, sorry. Yeah. Yes, I understand. <laughs> he was I, just, getting... I just muted he it, was... so don't yeah. worry about it. There won't be His any phone more, was going. There won't be any more sound coming off of that. You know, the business continues. Yeah. Uh, Even during our news? Yeah. How rude. <laughs> Believe it or not. How rude. So, yes, the people that moved out and they want to go to tax havens and, uh, you know, are going to be renting here. There's plenty of people who are millionaires, who are rich, who don't want to commit to New York City as their primary residence. Uh, and that's going to definitely drive up a lot of people who are renting. One, uh, one are person I was talking to on Wednesday, a uh, very wealthy guy when it comes to multifamily, what he multifamily investing, what he mentioned was that a lot of these younger people who have a lot of money, they actually do want to put it in something physical. So they are coming to him and saying, listen, uh, stock market crypto, where they probably made a lot of money, they wanted to diversify. So right. it'll be interesting where it might not be single family or a primary residence, but they might put it into a fund, a REIT, something where they actually do invest in multifamily. Um, but it also just shows the amount of money that is in New York City that is potential for investing uh, instead of just renting. Yeah. Well, there's definitely a culture. probably driving up the rental prices too. Definitely, you know. Well, and there's a culture. I mean, you tell people, uh, yeah, somebody rented a twenty thousand dollar four bed anywhere in the world, they're like, whoa. Yeah. You know, that's uh, four years of rent somewhere else of a yeah. house. So, uh, yeah, I agree. And there is a culture in our younger generation that is like, I'm just gonna they, rent. They would actually rather invest in a property yeah. and rent. Yeah. You know, they would rather use the money elsewhere. I blend credit card yeah. on for that. Yeah, I agree. I was thinking <laughs> I that. I just didn't want to name drop him. Yeah, I will. Uh, so my article is in Bloomberg, but it was going all around this week. Uh, so I saw it on multiple places. They even had somebody on CNBC come in and talk about this article specifically, is that New York City is losing out on $12 billion annually because of remote work. Wow. Yeah. So without people coming into the city and hustling and bustling and coming in, buying a breakfast, getting their nails done, uh, these are all hair salons. Uh, Maybe making you know, lunch instead of buying of, it. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the hybrid model. It's, Going uh, to dinners. Yeah, oh, the client dinners. Yeah. I mean, just think about Drinks. That. Even though the places at times still feel full, when you walk around Midtown, it's not like pre-pandemic where there was just a line out of sweet green that yeah. was so long you couldn't even go in 
So, and it almost seems like when everybody is in, then everybody's in. When everybody's 100%. out, everyone's yeah. out. So there's a business exactly owner. Exactly what I was thinking. Wishing that, you know. It's like there's a text over. that says everyone can go out and then everyone goes out. Yeah. And think about this as well. <laughs> the dry cleaners was something yeah. that they mentioned as well as, uh, uh, you know, a place that does your shoes. Shoe yeah. shine. Like that is no longer happening as much. Yeah. Or people will just do it elsewhere. So. Mayor Adams has been Definitely you know, under the heat on this because he, that's why last year, which they reference in this article, is you know he was trying to get people to come back to the office. Yeah, he was telling CEOs, "We got to change this. We got to get yeah. everybody back." And uh, when you see a big number like that, twelve billion annually, that's an economy. You know, yeah. that is helping the small businesses. You know, if they come in, and this is a spiral effect, if they come in and those places aren't open. Then you know, then they're never going to have that consistent shoe shine or nail place. They're yeah. going to do it back where they. Well, know, I noticed but, it when I so I've had this office for many years, and the salad places used to have lines like out the door, down the block, and now the lines are in the store, and it like wraps around maybe once or twice. Like they are probably eighty percent less than what they used to be. Like they used to be insane. Like, yes, of course, at times it gets crazy, but I noticed it on Fridays, no one is on the subway. There yeah. is a significant <laughs> difference. And I think, honestly, if you even remove one day out of, one, out of the week, every week, that makes a huge difference where you're now not commuting. I have a friend that used to live in the city. He was gonna get a place in the city because his business is here. And he said, listen, I'm just gonna do hotels. Yeah. hotels it's cheaper it's right near the office i don't have to do the city tax i can make my meals at home it's just two days a week so instead of buying a place and staying there which again that would be dinner in the city now it's dinner at home yep. so it's it's going to be a big shift big shift yeah it'll be well, interesting since you mentioned the hotels i have to say that right now on those very very small apartment pieta terrace is probably the best time where you could get a deal and spend less than you would on that hotel so i do think that that is a smart move for anybody doing this hybrid model but the article i would you know just some stats 10 percent work fully remote wow. so that's pretty low actually like because that was down from 16. Okay. In September, it was 49% that were going into the office at all or wow. hybrid, something like that. Yeah. And it bumped up from September to 50%. And I read that and I was like, 1%? That's definitely not what they're looking for. Yeah. It is a big number. Yeah. But that's, uh, they said they want at least something like 56%. It was really interesting when they gave the statistics on who's working remote, who's working hybrid. and. All I that. think you have a property that would be a perfect example of someone that can do a Pieter. Yeah. A little simple <laughs> plug right there. 233 69th Street. Going to write a poem about it later. So I got uh, two <laughs> interesting articles. I'll read them uh, both. Uh, so two. The East End. It's going to be like half and half because they're not both interesting on their own, but they both made sense to bring up. On the East End, they have been exploding. So in other words, we're talking out East where a lot of folks have taken a helicopter, taken a, uh, talking about remote work, that's a place to do remote work where you're out on the island, you have a beautiful beach house, whatever the case is, you don't have to pay the city taxes. You have a $5 million uh, you know, place in the city or a $5 million place out in Montauk. So. An undisclosed buyer bought an oceanfront trailer in the Montauk Shores. <laughs> I saw that. You saw article. this. 800 <laughs> square feet sold for $3.75 million. 800 square feet sold for $3.75 million. It's $5,000 a square foot. $5,000 a square foot. The next closest record was 1.8. So that... Buyer. I, no, I think that they bought it. The previous buyer was for one Re seven, and it wasn't that long ago. Oh I think that's God. what I read. Uh, to pay just under Charles, four. That could be the best article that you've ever brought to the table. <laughs> because when I saw that, my jaw dropped. I was five thousand a square foot. There is too much money out there. Uh, even when you start thinking about like what could you rent that out? Because I would have to imagine that's the idea. I mean, what do you do with that? Yeah, like, 800 square feet. 
Is it your storage unit? Yeah. And you're on a beach. Like it is it must be the best trailer in the park. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely yeah, it has to be. So that just caught my eye of what you just said is there's a lot of money out there. There's a lot of people that are probably just sitting there and they're like, listen, this is my remote work. I do drop shipping for Amazon. I make six million a year. I don't know what it yeah, is. Beachfront office. And they got a beachfront. What is the exit strategy on that? I mean, like, <laughs> I'm gonna sell it. Yeah. I think that person just wanted to be in He's the gonna put it on the back of his car and drive somewhere else yeah there's got to be a story behind that. yeah like he owed five thousand money or yeah. something <laughs> it's money laundering <laughs> that is five thousand square foot is wild is there, you can think about what you could buy even in the hamptons at three yeah oh, yeah a gigantic house yeah. i don't i never understood or that if you're either. on the water it's not going to be gigantic but it's still a house you know that it's needs, wild that needs the investigation so the, the 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 real quick one was that we've talked about different commercial spaces being used. I know Eric is going to be do- talking about commercial. Pickleball Club is coming to Long Island City. It's the first one being set up. 10,000 square feet is being leased and operated by a dedicated pickleball club. So it's a club. It's not open. It's a club. So that personally i think is a great shift to indoor different areas that you could turn it into it used to be like what do we do with this gigantic place that used to be i don't know a warehouse or you know we made things here pickleball is a great idea a basement big ceilings smart ten thousand square feet too yeah that's that's not small that's good and it's the first one so and it's it's usually outdoors so that's the interesting part you know it's going indoors so Thought that was interesting. I like to see. Not always. You played it indoors. I've never played it, oh. but I I <laughs> saw some people setting it up outdoors recently. But I've also all, I've only seen it outdoors. I went to go outdoors. play basketball indoors, and there were, the court was taken by okay. uh, pickleball people. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> but uh, COVID, yeah, that exploded. It doesn't surprise me. It reminds me a bit of the golf simulators. Oh yeah. Something around the city. There's one down on have, uh, uh, 45 Wall Street. I there's a bunch 37 now. wall street uh, yeah. and those are very successful i mean yeah. and they make it like members uh you know it's really cool yeah but uh pickleball wow big Ta- lease talking about commercial talking about you commercial. right up talking yeah so, no pun intended on that team it, actually my last article was from forbes sorry, sorry about that but i'm sure bloomberg reported the same exact thing yeah this one is from Bloomberg. they just changed it via chat new york page. city's largest office to condo conversion prepares to open good what is it the price no what is the address you know no no uh maclo the developer did one wall street wow down in your neck of the yep. woods i think it's something like 500 units 566 residential property Constructed sale? in 1931, it's going up for sale. Wow. Uh, beautiful, beautiful apartments. I mean, the renderings are incredible. The water views, everything you'd want, uh, which caught my eye because every time we've talked about uh, office to condo, there is going to be a huge shift in these office to condos. Uh, this one is in a pre-war, you know, very particular building in a desirable financial district location. A lot of times we're thinking more about the Midtown East. Yeah, but. The direction I'm going here is units on the market range from low floor studios for $1.1 million. Wow. So I think of those as becoming, how are you going to help the affordable market? You know, by bringing 566 units onto the market. Yes, that will help the affordability. That is a lot. But like, you know. units. uh, In one building? But the four bedroom uh, with outdoor space is 1275. So that's actually. That's not a lot. Yeah. That's what I thought. I wonder what too. the taxes are. Yeah, like. it'll be interesting. So that is coming to market. Definitely something you want to keep an eye on. Definitely something you'd want to tour. And if you want to tour it, you call <laughs> one of these two guys uh, who would love to take you in there. That's interesting because I think I talked about it last time is that I started my real estate career down on Wall Street. So all of those buildings converted. They were actually going to supposed to go to condo. But then 2009 happened. They all went to rental. So a lot of those buildings already converted, and then it kind of just stopped because the city was so pro FIDI, financial district development. Uh, it's interesting, one, one Wall Street that's literally on the water, that's got to be on the water because that's one, and then it goes up to Broadway from there. So it'll be, it'll be interesting how that sells out because uh, a new development just north of there, is it just north of there near the bridge, 
brand new development, a little tough selling out. I don't know if the one, you know what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about. It's right near the bridge. Oh, uh, two bridges. South Bridge. It's it a lot are still on the market. And Excel? Yeah, I would add. Excel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So it would be interesting how that sells, especially you, 500 you know units. How they become, it's a lot. You know how they become more affordable? Lower in the price. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I would say those are competition. I mean, obviously, I would imagine that the... It's the same quality. Yeah, you'd much rather go to one Wall Street, though. Yeah, it's either brand new development or do you go to pre-war. That's what it comes down to. Well, if you guys enjoyed this, we're going to be coming live every single week. The day is going to change, potentially. It could be Thursday. It could be Saturday. It could be Sunday night. Shoot us an email if you guys have any uh, articles you'd like us to talk about. I really like the ones today. And, of course, we're only going to be getting better, and we're going to be bringing more information to the channel. So Yeah, you got to follow. Yep, follow, like, subscribe. And I don't like when people say that. But, no, but uh, that's how they'll be able to see if we post it on Sunday evening. Okay. Yeah. Well, it is live. All right. Well, it's, all right. it's live somewhere else. Okay, Charles. That's you it. You have a good weekend. Talk.